Did you happen to catch any of 60 Minutes last night? Well, we did, and you're going to be seeing the clips all day, everywhere. Uh, joining me now to discuss it and what else is making the rounds today, NBC's own Stephanie Gosk and first-timer to our panel, Jedediah Beal is here, who is out with a new book called Do Not Disturb. And, of course, we have Matt Eisman, host of American Ninja Warrior. Yeah. But we're going to begin today with President Trump defending some controversial comments. I know you're shocked. Stay with me. He made one. Um, a little more than a week now removed from the confirmation of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh and President Trump taking some credit for that in an interview with 60 Minutes. He said uh, that comments he made about Kavanaugh's accuser, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, helped seal Kavanaugh's confirmation. Watch. Why did you have to make fun of her. I didn't really make fun. Well, they were laughing. What I said is, the person that we're talking about didn't know the year, the time, the place. How did you get home? I don't remember. How'd you get there? I don't remember. Where is the place? I don't remember. How many years ago was it? I don't know. I don't know. Professor Blasey Ford got before the Senate and, and was asked, what's the worst moment? And she said, when the two boys laughed at me, at my expense. Okay. And then I watched you mimic her, and thousands of people were laughing at her. They can do what they... I, I will tell you this. The way now Justice Kavanaugh was treated has become a big factor in the midterms. Have you seen what's gone on with the polls? But did you have to... Well, I think she was treated with great respect. I'll, I know, I'll but, be honest. But, but do you think there you are those treated that think her she with, shouldn't have been. Do you think you treated her with great respect? I think so, yeah. I did. But you seem to be saying that she lied. Uh, well, you know what? I'm not going to get into it because we won. It doesn't matter. Well, we won. So the president said, had I not made that speech, we would not have won. Um, and I would say that's... I actually don't think that's true. I mean, well, I think Trump deserves credit if you're happy about Kavanaugh getting in, or even if you're not, I think... He gets credit for standing by his nominee and not folding. That's what the Republicans thought he was going to do. That's what a lot of Democrats wanted him to do, to fold. And Trump doesn't fold. I mean, he just doesn't, which is one of the reasons why Republicans approve him in the high 90s. Um, it wasn't really his speech. It was more Lindsey Graham's speech and Brett Kavanaugh's speech. But Trump didn't fold. Yeah, I think I think what people were really hoping for was that he would just completely stay out of it, to be perfectly honest, that he wasn't going to tweet something crazy that was going to compromise the whole thing. The reason that Brett Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh got in was because there was no corroboration that they found. There was no evidence. And that when Blasey Ford came out and said, you know, these people are witnesses, they either corroborated Brett Kavanaugh's story or they said, I've never seen Brett Kavanaugh do anything like that. I don't know about this part. But it really didn't have anything to do with Donald Trump. So I think for him to take credit for that moment, what he can take credit <laughs> for is that he had someone who was a strong candidate. And he had, a, uh, you know, Brett Kavanaugh had this long, you know, 300-something opinions out there. He had a long legal history. He had a ton of people that came out to support him. A lot of women, by the way, that all helped him. And the fact that this case that was brought forward and the others, you know, accusing him of gang rape. Nobody had any evidence, any proof, any corroboration, but yeah. that had very little to do with Donald Trump. That, say, that, was, th that last thing was completely blown out Ridiculous. of the water by the witness herself who con contradicted her d sworn declaration in an NBC uh, News interview. Go ahead, Steph. You know, you know what really sticks with me in that soundbite is what he says at the end. And he says, basically, it doesn't matter. We won. He's Supreme Court justice. And I'm going to tell you, accountability does matter. It matters when you're Supreme Court justice. It matters when you're president of the United States. Accountability matters, and we need to ask these questions. You know, he is... Trump is all about um, means to an end. You know what I mean? Like, ends justify the means. Yeah. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to him about um, some of the nastiness that happened, you know, not between us, but on his part toward me. Um, after all those months, and he said the same thing. You know, look, I won. I won the Republican nomination at that point, and, and then ultimately the presidency. And I have to say, he's right. I mean, he gets results. And But the question that the people in the country have is, at what cost, right? Does it, does it send the message to our kids, to others, that anything goes, it's all about the win, getting the big W. Well, I also look, though, that I don't think he was the one who initiated this in a partisan way, right? I mean, we saw Feinstein have this accusation and sat on it, because I don't think she felt it was credible. This was their last device. So I think they used it as a political tool to begin with. Yep. And he just responded in kind, and when he does it, he does it better than anybody does. So whether you like it or not, I don't think that he's invented the game. He's just playing a very 
strong, politicizing game. And again, when he talks about we won, it may not be about this issue. What he's doing is, as we head towards the midterms, he's trying to get his base mm -hmm. built up because everyone's predicting this blue wave. And we've seen this whole Kavanaugh incident has been a turning point, inflection point back towards the red side. And so I think he's trying to capitalize on it because the one thing he does he does like to but take man, I credit. Gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, to, to what you said about Feinstein, there certainly are questions to be raised on how she handled it. But she was asked by Blasey Ford not to reveal it publicly. We don't know how it got into the public sphere. There are a lot of questions that remain to this day unanswered in that process. But the truth is, I mean, Trump went out there. Look, when he was, he was definitely imitating Blasey Ford. It's up to the viewer to decide whether that was mocking or not. He didn't mock her personally. He didn't go after her looks, as he's been known to do. He didn't give her a number. <laughs> on a scale. Um, OK, but so he imitated her. He didn't get personal. But I will say, you know, it goes both ways. The Democrats, as, as Kavanaugh pointed out in his, in his confirmation hearing, he was called by Cory Booker. He did, them, did him the courtesy of not naming him, Spartacus. He was called uh. evil. He was, Brett Kavanaugh was called evil mm -hmm. uh, in those confirmation hearings. And then Kristen Gillibrand said that women will die if Brett Kavanaugh gets elected to the Supreme Court. So it had already gotten ugly and personal personal, which, you know, when Trump gets criticized for standing up there and doing doing what he does, yeah. you know, you said the context of it is lost. Let me let me move on, because do you remember who he ran against? <laughs> yeah. Vaguely. You remember he beat Vaguely. Hillary Clinton, right? <laughs> she also made some news this week in, in an interview with CBS Sunday Morning, and she addressed in that interview her husband's affair with Monica Lewinsky. Um, and then she was also asked whether she, Hillary, played any role in criticizing the character of the women who accused Bill of sexual misconduct, which went beyond Lewinsky, as you know. Uh, all right, so just watch first what she said about Lewinsky. Do you think Bill should have resigned in the wake of the Monica Lewinsky scandal? Absolutely not. It wasn't an abuse of power? No, no. There are people who look at the incidents of the 90s and they say a president of the United States cannot have a consensual relationship with an intern. The power imbalance is too great. Who was great. an adult. But let me ask you this. Where's the investigation of the current incumbent against whom numerous allegations have been made and which he dismisses, denies, and ridicules? So there was an investigation, and it, as I believe, came out in the right place. So she says it was not an abuse of power for the president of the United States to have an affair with a 22-year-old intern in the White House. I gotta tell you, honestly, I, I am not a political analyst. I don't cover politics for NBC News, and I really come at this as any typical voter would. And I think she has a relatability problem, has from the very beginning, and I've often asked myself... You don't say. What, yeah, right? <laughs> what, right? But what would have happened? Let's just imagine what would have happened if Hillary Clinton started her campaign by saying, I want to go back to Monica Lewinsky, and I want to tell you this. Bill Clinton's a jerk. And you know what? I valued our marriage and I stayed with him. What he did to Monica Lewinsky was wrong. How would that have changed the landscape yeah. for her? I really wonder how much... She's not capable of there that kind of emotion. There are, huge, there are lots of factors that contributed. <laughs> She's not. Yeah. I completely agree. But in agree. that moment, like, why not just come out and say, you know what? I, I've thought about it again. Not only, and it's a different time. Not only that, but everyone remembers he committed perjury. I mean, this is a guy who That's why he got impeached. The American people. That was the reason he got impeached. This is a guy who was accused of rape and sexual assault by many, many women over the years. And I think it's outrageous because the media sometimes puts him out there, and now he, they're doing a tour. He and Hillary are doing a tour. This is the heat of the Me Too movement. Bill Clinton's going to be out there talking about the Me Too movement. This is a guy who disgraced the Oval Office. Frankly, he did. There was a huge power difference. You can't tell me that there's not a power dynamic when you're dealing with a 22-year-old intern and a sitting president of the United States. For her to not acknowledge that yep. tells me that she also can't be a spokeswoman. I don't have the whole list people. of Bill Clinton accusers, but in his defense, I don't know that many, many would be accurate. Paula Jones accused him of exposing uh, her himself to her. There's Jennifer Juanita Broderick, Broderick who accused, Juanita accused him of rape. Jennifer Flowers had a consensual affair with him. Um, so however you want to characterize but, that. Yeah. But, but can I just say before yeah. you go, Matt, she was also, Hillary was also asked about whether she, Hillary Clinton, played any role in criticizing the character of the women who had accused him. Um, and, and keep in mind, he settled with Paula Jones for over $800,000, uh, that lawsuit. And Hillary said, no, I, none. I had no role. I take responsibility for my life and my actions. And let me tell you, that, too, is, according to the New York Times, another lie. Um, she was reportedly calling... Um, 
Jennifer Flowers, with whom he did have an affair, trailer trash. Uh, she did refer to her as some failed cabaret singer with not much of a resume to fall back on. The New York Times <laughs> reported terrible, terrible. that Hillary was the one who greenlit a private investigator to impugn Jennifer uh, Flowers' character, quote, until she was destroyed beyond all recognition. She called Monica Lewinsky a narcissistic Looney Tunes. So can you just spare me? Can you spare me? Whoa. Spare me. They Well said. And I mean, that, that was the time when they coined the phrase the bimbo eruptions, right. where there was, there was victim blaming going on there. And the thing in, in America, Stephanie, to your point, I think this is a country of second chances. And were Hillary to come out and say, I stood by my man, I did what I had to do, but now I'm saying that was wrong, I think people would embrace that. Yeah. Give us a chance to say, throw yourselves and, on the altar of contrition. And also, for those people that say, it was 20 years ago, it was ancient history, it matters now. How we handle that matters now. It matters now in this conversation that we're having. I think well, a lot of Democrats says, are taking another hard look yes, at how they defended. You have a lot Bill. of Democrats now coming out and saying we made a mistake. We should have held Bill Clinton to a higher standard because the National Organization for Women and all these pro-women organizations gave him a pass. The National Organization for Women will only defend you as a woman if they think you're a Democrat. And they will only go after you as a man That's if they think you're a Republican. True. That's the truth. Right. For Hillary in the past year to say all women should be believed when 20 years ago right. we saw the exact opposite. Right. You have a zero credibility there. Unless your and name unless, is Paula Jones, Jennifer Flowers. Right. Unless it affects and her Michael life Whiskey. personally. Right. Unless Everyone you else. made that public mea culpa, you, you, you can't just switch that statement. Yeah. Our memories aren't that short. And, well, clearly, we have tape of you saying that. We've got if we're going to hold, if we're going to hold President Trump accountable, if we're going to question him and give him the tough questions, then President Clinton, former President Clinton, needs those same questions. It has to be asked. Absolutely right. And and don't lecture us about how dishonest Trump is, which, by the way, he does not have an adult relationship with the truth, without being <laughs> honest about Hillary Clinton and the many, many lies she told and continues to tell.